Hello. Hello. Now you're on. Hello. <laughs> I am Tara, the author of The Dining on a Dining Cookbook. Today we are making hamburger casserole on page 230. And if you weren't here on time, you're going to miss this recipe. So for those of you watching it later, you got to catch it. <laughs> All right. Today we are making hamburger casserole. And go ahead, Dave. This really is literally a five-minute recipe. Um, I mean, it takes hardly any time at all. So I have browned my hamburger. I am not using all of this hamburger in the casserole. I'm going to show you how I package it. And then here I have my noodles already pre-cooked because of where we have no place to film at the moment. So I had to pre-cook them. And then I'm going to take my tomato sauce, or in this case, I'm using pasta sauce because originally I was going to make pizza casserole, but then the boys were able to get me hamburger, so then we switched back to hamburger casserole. Super easy, guys. All you do is you put in your noodles, your seasoned salt or your salt and garlic and onion powder. I rarely use those by themselves anymore because I just combine my salt, garlic powder, and onion powder and just a little bit of paprika for my seasoned salt. And I use that for 95% of my cooking. And it saves taking out um, bottles and all that kind of stuff. And then you take your cheese and you put it in there. Now, you can put this in a casserole dish and bake it. Now, I usually am in too much of a hurry to do that because everybody's hungry and I usually make it this way in the summer when it's really hot, although today it's like 50 degrees here, which is really nice. And I am using American and a little bit of cheddar. I'm kind of combining both of them today. Just for a different taste. And then you're going to add about a half a pound of hamburger. Now, most recipes will call for a pound of hamburger, but you do not need a pound of hamburger for most casseroles. Just use a half a pound. Most casseroles have cheese or beans or something else in it. Can you bring me my bowl? That um, is part of protein also, yeah. and you can just eat less protein. I know that goes against everything everybody's saying right now, but you really just don't need as much protein as what um, people push nowadays. So just eat less food if you're trying to lose weight. All right. Now, just get it all mixed up and all nice and yummy. And then, if you want to put it in a casserole dish, bake it at 350 degrees. And it'll make the cheese all nice and brown. There you go. Look at that fat. That Told you that was like two minutes. Now, here's the thing. Normally when I make this, can you unplug the, um, whatever that thing's called? <laughs> um, normally when I make this, I use hamburger that is already browned. So I don't waste time browning hamburger for 90% of my meals because it's all ready around. Okay, so we're going to have to get the studio done this week. <laughs> this is not working out very well. Uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to show you real quick how I package up my hamburger. Now, this was three pounds of hamburger. It's probably close to two and a quarter between the boys picking at it, me picking at it, and everybody picking at it. So it's probably closer to around two, two and a quarter right now. And I am going to divide this into my little packets. And 
then what I do is I freeze them and then I don't have to worry about browning hamburger. Now, you can go ahead and season it. I do season it with seasoned salt. So then that step is already done if I just need it for really, really fast, but you don't have to. Um, you can leave it unseasoned if you want. Um, and then what I use is the little fold sandwich bags. Okay, the old fashioned sandwich bags that they used to use before um, zip top bags came and see, you have the little opening right here. You fold it down and then you fold the opening over and you have a nice little hamburger packet just like that. And then what I do is I take this and I lay it flat in a freezer bag and then I just pull up the packets. That way you're only spending a half a penny for, for a, um, what do you call the sandwich folding sandwich bag versus a freezer bag, which costs anywhere from three to 10 cents, depending on the kind you buy. So there's that little tip. All right. So Q &A time. that's right. it for today's show. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing when I fry so. fried up hamburger, I'll put this little tip in too, is I would fry up a pound of hamburger if I just had one pound and I would split it in two. Well, I take about two to three tablespoons out and put in a freezer container every time I fried up a pound of hamburger. So you basically use about a third of a pound of ham, or I mean about, yeah, about a third of a pound of hamburger instead of a half a pound even. Pretty much, because what I did was I would take, oh, like three, two to three tablespoons and put in a container in the freezer. Then I would take what was left of that pound and split it in two. And after, I used a lot of hamburger back then for my meals. So by the end of like two weeks or three weeks, I had another whole pound, basically pound of hamburger that I could use then for another meal, you know, that I just was, a, you know, a surprise one or, you know, a bonus one. So Courtney asked, I don't see those types of plastic bags in the stores anymore. Yeah, they're there. You're just not looking hard enough. They're hard to find. So just- I've seen them at the Dollar Tree. They're just less common. Right? So, well, they're just not as many. Usually there's, what about your bowl? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. you Dave wants his bowl it's filled over day. here. <laughs> um, I uh, usually find them on the top or the bottom shelf. They're in with the regular zip bags, but you just have to look. But here's the thing. The reason why you don't find them is most of the time they're sold out. Oh. Because I, um, I always find the place for them but they're not there so i think they're actually very popular but um all right then i just stack them up and i just pull one out as i need it out of my freezer and that right. that makes me so much easier i use those things all the time because you can make you know tacos and enchiladas and uh spaghetti and all kinds of things with those and once you've got the hamburger already to me, that was half the battle, is having a dirty pan yeah. with greasy pan frying up the hamburger. Yeah. If I had that, I'd just pull it out of the well, freezer. And... and for me, what I do is I get a, usually like 10 pounds of hamburger, and I'll spend 20, 25 minutes frying it all up. It really doesn't take that long, 25 minutes probably. Frying it all up, because once you got the pan hot and the grease that's left in there, then once the grease is hot, it cooks really fast. And I mean, like this, um, this three pounds only took me like 10 minutes to cook up today. And so I cooked it up really fast, but here's the thing. I only cook ground beef, even though we have it probably twice a week, I probably only cook ground beef once every two months. Mm -hmm. because I cook it all up in one batch, put it in the freezer. And that's how I cut my meals down. So that mm -hmm. I only spend 10 to 15 minutes cooking dinner. I mean, most of you on here probably right now already missed the recipe because it was so fast. Well, I spend five, five, 10, 15 to 20 minutes is all I do for dinner because I don't mm -hmm. have 
I don't have the option to waste with dinner. Like last night, it was nachos. Just pull out a thing, a hamburger, cut up my lettuce, cut up my tomatoes, put my nachos out there, put the cheese, put it all out there for everybody to nuke their cheese, and we're done. Mm -hmm. So you can make sloppy joes. You can do all kinds of things. With the yeah, the problem nowadays is people are making cooking way too complicated. They're just doing too many steps. They're doing steps that they don't need to do. And that's why we really dumb it down and make it simple because it really is not that hard. Well, that's why our cookbook in the first place, I think, was a little bit more popular because they were selling cookbooks like Julia Child's type cookbooks where you did all this fancy French cooking and that type of thing. And there weren't a whole lot of cookbooks that just did basic you know, everyday family cooking. It was cooking. Betty Crocker, but that was about it. Yeah, but there weren't a whole lot. And so when we started doing our, our cookbook with the simple, easy recipes, everyday family recipes in it, it was more popular because they're so much easier. You don't have to make them complicated at all, you know, to no. do it. So, all right. So in case you guys missed it, Dining on a Dime cookbook on page 230. Right now we're 35% 30 off. We have a pre-ordering sale. We expect the books in in about five to six weeks. Now we had a printing issue, so it's probably going to be closer to around September 25th or 30th now instead of the 15th. Maybe we'll get surprised and it'll be here by the 15th, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, so if you want to get it, we have pre-ordering. Everything in that order will come together. So if you're ordering our gluten-free book, which is in stock now, we, we still have 350 gluten-frees left. But if you want this sent separate, you need to order it separate, okay? Otherwise, everything else is going in the same box in about five or six weeks when the books get here. So just so you know, but it's 35% off right now, livingonadime.com. All right, question, oh, yes, uh, I was... Oh, go ahead, Michael. There were a couple of recipe questions. Well, first of all, Kathy Bulmer says that she said her son had a motorcycle accident. She was asking for prayer and that her a bunch of her family that's there with her has that thing that's going around. Oh, oh I'm um, sorry, Kathy. She said your secret of putting the burger, the ground beef in the bags has really been making it easier for her right now. She's got those people. Oh, oh my good. Word. And Be sure to let us know how he's doing, too. Yeah. And everybody is. Uh, Rachel and a couple of other people were asking, how do you prevent getting a freezer taste from cooking it and freezing it ahead of time? Well, you don't leave it in the freezer for six months. I only do like two to three months at a time. And in that amount of time, it doesn't get freezer burn. And, and I, I don't like the freezer burn myself either. That's why I yeah. don't freeze, freeze quite so much. Oops. But I, and this is kind of an expensive thing to do, but if ever you can afford a vacuum sealer, once I got my vacuum sealer, I vacuum seal all of mine and no freezer burn. I've never had any freezer burn for anything I vacuum sealed before. So, But freezer burn usually comes from when you leave food in your freezer too long or your freezer defrosts and then is frozen again and then defrosts and, and frozen again. So I have very rare, very rarely, I haven't had freezer burn issues. So uh, Bonnie's asking is... Is it all new recipes, which would be done in the time too, I assume. So volume two is all new recipes. Now, it is a blue cover now. People were getting confused having two red covers. I thought two red covers meant it was a set, but people didn't get that. So volume one is red. And now volume two, if you go to order, is going to have a blue cover. And yes, it's all totally different recipes with the exception of two because... I had the perfect banana bread and the perfect muffin recipe, and I couldn't find anything better. And I had variations that I wanted to add in volume two. So other than those two recipes, everything else is brand new. And speaking of variations, since we're doing a casserole tonight, on the website, if you guys want more ideas for casseroles, go to it's Easy Casserole and... Let's see, Michael, is one it easy? Meals. And one dish meals. And I I wrote a, a whole post on there where I list very um, in detail how to actually make up your own casseroles. I list, uh, you have to have like a main ingredient, then you have a secondary ingredient, then you have a starch. And I list all these things that you need 
to put together for a casserole. And then I list what those things are. Like for a main ingredient, it would be like chicken or turkey or ham or something like that. And then the starch would be like rice, pasta, potatoes. And I put down the seasonings or the goodies you can put in all these. So I list ideas for you to mix and match your own casseroles and do whatever, uh, whatever, uh, it gives you more ideas. It tells you about seasonings, about putting toppings on them. So you might check that out on the website because it goes into a lot of detail if you're, and casseroles are so fast and easy. Okay, so several people commented on the quantity that I made. I made a half batch tonight. I've got two that are sick to their stomach. I am gluten-free and dairy-free, so I don't eat it at all. So this is basically just gonna be for Mike and mom. <laughs> and then, Somebody said, um, what else do you serve? So then I would have this with a salad or some broccoli. You could add some French bread or just some toast with butter and jam or biscuits. Any, I know it's two carbohydrates. I know I get that, but you could do, you know, uh, like a vegetable and a fruit. You could do fruit cocktail. You could do sliced apples anything like that. And also. it's almost a meal in itself because people don't realize the tomato sauce that a quarter cup of tomato sauce is equal to one serving vegetable. So yeah. you've got to really well balance just in the casserole alone, but it is nice to add the sides. Yeah. And um, let's see what there was something. Oh, what do you do when you have growing boys that are eating a lot? Well, just add more noodles. Yeah. Give them more things like apples, broccoli, those kinds of things it's will help fill, fill them, them up. up. Uh -huh. Don't, you don't, Donna, we're fellow Wyomingites <laughs> oh, now. Oh, that's right, Donna, we are. We <laughs> waved we at you as we were driving yeah, last week. Every time we go through there, we wave at you. We always say, hi, Donna. <laughs> One of these days, we're going to have lunch with you. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, somebody said, I agree. You don't have to cook five course meals. Yeah. Stop thinking. Well, first of all, stop cooking so much food. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know some people have husbands and sons that eat a lot, but even with that, are they overweight? Do they really need to be eating that much food? And I know if your husband's 350 pounds, you're not going to, you're not going to force them to lose weight. I totally get that. But you don't need to help matters along either. <laughs> so fix a nice, healthy dinner. And then if he wants to go snack later or something, that's fine. But, you know, a lot of people just fix way too much food in the first place. So well, cut your portions. Well, back even like bit. with this casserole now, you've got the casserole. You really, like I said, you don't have to add a whole lot. But if you added a salad, or an apple that's plenty or... of food. You know, you don't have to have like five or six different sides yeah. to go with anything you know Beth said she made this for dinner tonight and added taco seasoning for mexican flavor yes. that'd be really good and you could do pepperonis with mozzarella cheese oh that'd be really good i'll share the link again and i've, I've added, added cream cheese to this recipe too with the taco seasoning it's really good yeah uh, mm -hmm. sarah was asking if we sell cookbooks with the coil binding anymore mm -mm. no we don't have the coil binding anymore it's it's all the hard bound. So, well, you but that it lays flat. I was going to say yeah. this, I was very, Tara and I were very, very fussy and we weren't going to do, we wanted the binding and we were having lots of trouble getting printer to do it. So we practice with this thing and practice. And as you can see, it just lays flat really, really good. You can add the early pages and the later pages. Yeah. 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 It's just like, you know, there's nothing. It, it does. We worked through the whole book, didn't we? Making yeah. sure that it would lay down flat because we don't like cookbooks that won't lay flat. No. Uh, is Ellie doing goat milk anytime soon? So Ellie has decided she doesn't want to do that anymore. She's in Colorado and we're here and she doesn't have room in her apartment to do it, to have a setup for shipping and everything. Um, I'm still on the fence if I'm going to open it back up myself or not. I don't have any really good shipping help well i know you want to do it but i don't have any shipping help <laughs> and i don't want i don't like doing the shipping and i'm not sure with the way people aren't wanting to work right now i don't know if i could even hire someone to do it because it was such a because no they're begging for people to work and so i don't know i'm, I'm going back and forth and then the other thing is 
it's kind of a hassle with all the bookkeeping, separating the soap from living on a dime and all this. So I don't know. I'm going back and forth on if I still want to open it back up again or not. I don't know. I'll let you know in a Maybe little bit. Maybe if we but... catch our breath after moving and everything, it would be easier to decide. Well, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying to convince her. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So I don't know. I hate to just leave you guys with that because I know it's really good stuff, but... I don't know. Um, all right. Let's see. Julie says Saturday nights used to be surprise casserole. It was typically hamburger, pasta, and leftover veggies in the fridge. And then tomato, a cream of mushroom soup. Yeah. And that'd be that's really good. The, the, where I sent you to on the website thing, it tells you, you know, you can throw vegetables. If you have a, a container of frozen vegetables, you can add it to this if you wanted to, you know, yeah. and, they're really handy to use leftovers. Mm -hmm. And we talk about leftovers and everybody says, my family won't eat leftovers, but this is a great way casseroles are to use up those leftovers and your family yeah. won't even know they're eating them. Genevieve said, I binge watched Penny Pinch and Mama and I missed the burglar locked in the basement story. Can you tell me the story real quick? Okay, give her the condensed version. Oh, great. <laughs> well, one night... <laughs> One night uh, I was hearing, uh, well, there was, we lived, okay, we lived here and there was a convenience store, an alley between us and a convenience store. And it was forever getting robbed. Well, one night. No, uh, okay. So what she didn't say was it's forever getting robbed and they would run through our yard. Yeah, down our driveway. With the police chasing them. Yeah. Well, several times I saw them going through the yard on the bay window. Yeah, they used, you. they yeah. used our. They would jump our fence and go. <laughs> because it was a third through fair and so they would run through our air our yard by our house well yeah. one night uh the police came and i could hear somebody in the basement and i saw because i could hear my basement door shut it made a loud noise it was an outside door to get into our basement you it, you didn't go through the house it was an outside door and i heard it bang it shut because we had two doors you had to shut in order to get in there so then Pretty soon I heard the police coming. So I ran out and I told the police, I said, I think they went into my basement. So they, the police said, okay. I said, let me, let me go in there first. They said, well, no way are you going to go in there first. But our my light in the basement was really weird and you couldn't find it. unless it was you on knew, the ceiling. Yeah, and unless you knew where it was at. And I knew the police wouldn't be able to see anything, but they just took their flashlights and went on and they kind of shined around in there and they said, well, we can't see anything. And my basement wasn't that big, but it had crawl spaces where you could climb up on a workbench and it, it was pretty deep crawl space that you could crawl under yeah. and the whole house, it was un went underneath the whole house and they came out and they said, well, we don't see anybody. So they left and I thought, I know that guy's in there. They just couldn't see him, that he was probably in the crawl space. Mm -hmm. And so I went back in the house and it was really, really quiet for a long time. And then after about 30 minutes or an hour or something, I forget now what, how much time I heard crashing and banging and we had a lot of tools and stuff piled in the basement. And I knew that poor person was, well, I guess he was a poor person. I don't know. was trying to get out it's of the basement. It's his own darn tune fault I being know, a burglar. But he couldn't see because it was so dark in there. There was no windows and he couldn't find the light. And he was banging around in there and he couldn't get out. And so finally, after a while, it got really quiet and I didn't know what to do because I'd already called the police once or told them and they said there was nothing in there. So I just left him in there and I locked my back door. And in the morning, my son left for work about 630 and there was one little hole in the basement that just a little bit of light could come through. And so as soon as the car drive drove out of the driveway, I guess he thought all the people were gone mm. and he was going to try again. And pretty soon I heard the basement door bang, bang, bang shut. And so he left. But so I slept all night with the thief down in my basement. Well, what was I supposed to do? You know, <laughs> so, so you couldn't get into the main house from the basement. No, no. no. The basement only had an outside door. Only so an outside door. So I had all my doors locked. So unless in. he had an ax with him and he was going to ax, chop his way through the floor or something. But, but I kept hearing <laughs> him down there. And I, I kind of felt sorry for him in a way, you know, because I know he was hurt. I would have yelled through the floor. That's what you get for being a thief. Maybe you learned a lesson. 
<laughs> so yeah, that's my thief story. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Music Mad says they're in level four lockdown again. I'm so sorry. Oh. She said it's gonna be so easy with our book. Thank you so much. I kind of paraphrase, but thank you. <laughs> Uh, Amelia says, I was given a pound of ground lamb, so you fix it like ground beef or ground turkey? Yes. I would. Yeah. Yeah. I make, I would. I make a lamb stew out of it that's really good with potatoes and lamb and carrots, and it's really good. Just look up a lamb stew or mutton stew. Is that what it's called? I don't know what they call it, but anyway. And you might look up seasonings for lamb, too, because they might be just a little bit different, but nothing yeah. major. Regular salt and pepper, yeah. pepper works for most things, too. Cruiser122 says, thank you for making the gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. You're welcome. Or am I going to be doing a diabetic cookbook? No. I don't think we would have a big enough audience that it would be worth us doing. Sorry. And there's a lot of diabetic cookbooks, but not as many gluten-free probably ones out there, too. Yeah. Well, and most of the recipes in Dining on a Dime can be, I mean, I've been on a yeah. diabetic diet thousands of times myself anyway, and I just adjust the recipes. So it's not, you know, it's just, it's really easy to cook a diabetic diet. I, I really honestly don't know why people make it so hard. It's kind of like with the gluten-free diet. I really did not want to write this book because I'm like, it's so easy. I had that question today. Somebody said, well, how do you cook gluten-free? It's so expensive. I don't buy gluten-free products. I buy about three or four gluten-free products, sandwich bread when um, when I need it in a hurry and I can't make it homemade, crackers, gluten-free crackers, gluten-free pasta, and then occasionally I'll get myself a treat like a vanilla wafer or something. That's all I buy that's gluten-free. Everything else is just regular recipes and you just leave out, like I use corn tortillas instead of flour. I use rice instead of pasta I or, or um, flour tortillas or something like that. <laughs> so, um, so it's that's, really that's not hard. That's a secret to any diet. If you have to be on a special diet, you're going to have to accept you may have to Sacrifice a few things, but think of what you can have, the fruits, the vegetables, yeah. and all those things and concentrate on those instead of what you're kind of missing out on type of thing, yeah. too. It helps a little bit. Yeah. Was that know. the temperature you just showed us, Dave? Mm -hmm. I think Dave just showed us the temperature. It's 51. It was 100 yesterday. Yeah. And 100 yesterday and 51 today. Yeah. It is so rainy. nice out. It's nice and raining and it's cozy. Uh, really nice. And we had to bring all our furniture from the patio in off the deck. <laughs> we had, I got a video of it and it'll be coming up in a, probably a week or a couple of weeks, probably, but we have an awning on our patio. Everybody says, how are you getting that furniture from being wet? We have an awning on our patio. So it's, it's not going to be sitting in the rain all the time, but the wind was blowing last night and I thought the rain might blow on it and my paint hasn't cured yet. It needs to cure probably a couple more weeks. So mom and Dave covered it with a wind tunnel and then the, or I mean with the tarp. tarp and then it ended up being like a wind tunnel and Dave's like, mom, I knew this wasn't going to work. It's like having a parachute and a wind tunnel. <laughs> so. So we ended up having to bring it all in to sit in our living room. It was about 10, 10, 30 last night. I heard them. I was in the basement. I heard them dragging yeah. all this. Stuff. But here's the thing. It actually looks really good in my living it room. It does look good in here. I'd almost thought about keeping it in my living room. It looks so good. As a matter of fact, well, we can't show you. Well, let's see. Can you turn on the light and show them over there, Dave? You got to see it. It actually looks really good. Oh, turn on this light over here over the fireplace. Uh, here just a second you got to see it it looks so good it does look good i was shocked you could use that for your summer furniture and this for your other for your winter furniture well, i don't know if they can see it or not here just Maybe go ahead and turn the camera Dave, and let's see if they can see it okay yeah just go ahead and rotate it and let's see if they can see it just rotate the camera and let's see if we can see it just do it. Let's see. Dave's going to see if he can zoom it in. Hold on. See, doesn't that look good over there? 
I'm telling you, I'm thinking, I don't know. It looks pretty good. Looks very cozy. Uh -huh. So I haven't decorated anything at all yet. So please. We just got piled yeah. furniture. Okay, you can come back, Dave. Everywhere. Pile so, boxes everywhere. Anyway, at 10 o'clock last night, we were hauling my patio furniture into the living room. Um, it, yeah, so it was crazy, but <laughs> a lot of people have been asking me about the kitchen. They say they absolutely love the kitchen. Some people want to know if we're going to paint the kitchen. Some people are wondering, I think some people think we might be doing the show in the kitchen. So maybe you should go into okay, that. Okay. So this kitchen is not feasible for the show period. The island's too high. So that type of thing. this island here drops down on the back side about this far. I need to just do a tour of it. But it drops down about this side, and there's another sink here. So I've got a sink here and a sink there. The stove top is back here, and then the refrigerator. But it's a really, it's not a functional kitchen at all. It, it's just a nightmare for somebody who actually cooks a lot. It, it's just even worse for filming because we have nowhere to film me doing anything. As a matter of fact, we're filming tomorrow or Friday, I can't remember which, but we're doing it in our bedroom. We're going to haul everything into the bedroom so we can film in the bedroom because it's just not feasible. So we, I don't know. We thought about whacking down the island and taking the sink out and just having a big island there. And that would make things a lot easier because the dishwasher is here too. And so we'd move the dishwasher over there, but we kind of wanted to get finances, um, we want to get ahead on our finances and get the house paid off and everything first before we do that. So I don't know what we're going to do. It's not a real functional kitchen. That's one of the reasons why we hesitated so much on buying this house. Cause I really did not like the kitchen, but that is something that we can change. So anyway, Beth got two pounds for a dollar on Turkey. Very good. Ooh, that's a good deal. Very oh, good. Your redo on the, Genevieve wants to know if you use waterproof fabric. So on the couch, I used waterproof fabric, but on the on the side chairs, I did not. But like I said, it's under an awning. It's I'm not thinking it's going to be that big of a deal. I was bringing the cushions in in the winter anyway. This is Wyoming. Mm -hmm. We're probably not going to be sitting on the patio very much. Like in Colorado, we could sit in the patio. But During Wyoming, I don't know if we'll be sitting on the patio. Yeah. So um did you, already, did you already talk about where you got the fabric so i just no i'm not i'm sorry i can't tell you where i got the fabric i bought it online i'll tell you that much but i'm not real happy with the place that i ordered it from and i don't want to promote them at all so the fabric's really really pretty but i'm not going to tell you where to order it from because i'm not sure that i would order from them again so i'm really sorry I know. Just maybe Google it if you want to, but just say you were warned. You were warned. Well, and I will say when I ordered this, they were almost out of it anyway. So they may not even have it in stock mm -hmm. anymore. So Beth wants to know what's the white thing on the bar. <laughs> oh, it's a candle holder. It's a candle holder holder. Yeah. So um does the cookbook have how many carbs with each recipe? No. I don't worry about carbs or nutrition information, um, but you can put it in a carb calculator if you want. Uh, let's see. Wow. Everybody's kids got laid off and then they got hired in like three days. Oh, nice. Wow. Dave's applying for jobs. He started applying yesterday. He's been helping us unpack and everything. So finally yesterday he started applying. He's already got one interview. So, um, and he's got another one that he'd actually rather have that job, I really, really want to that. <laughs> but it's kind of something that's different, but, um, it's kind of niche. yeah. Like, so, um, let's see. What was the question, Mike? Yeah, if we met our neighbors. Oh, have we met our neighbors. Yes. We've met yes. two of our neighbors. Actually, we technically have four neighbors really. They're quite a ways from us, but we do have four neighbors and we've met two of them already. Mm -hmm. so. They were really nice too. Sandra wants to know if you're up for hire as a security guard after your um, thief thing. Thief thing. <laughs> so there you go. 
Um, okay, let's see. I what? hate not being able to talk to you guys and chat with you. Well, you can go ahead. Have, I know, but yeah. I can't read it very good and concentrate at the same time. Oh. So I may not be on the show sometimes just so I can chat at you while I'm doing the moderating. So, yeah. Uh, Nancy, Tara, thank you for making our, your videos and keeping us updated on the move. Love the deck furniture. We're so talented. Oh, thanks. By the way, Nancy. Oh, yes. Thank you. We got thank it. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. I need to get you. I need to. Uh, I haven't opened this yet, but I think it's Bible stuff. So thank you very much. And Nancy's one of our good prayer warriors. We have a lot yes. of prayer warriors on here. And then Nancy in Wichita <laughs> sent me this. And she said, I thought you'd like to know that there is a new company in Wichita called Warsh Wichita. <laughs> <laughs> that's good oh, that's pretty good thank you i got a good laugh out of that one that was pretty good that is good um update on let's see do you have pictures do you have those videos mike of the them getting the bibles can you find that real quick uh, yes. if i keep jabbering on for a minute oh that's really something yeah. um how's it going with us all living together oh. <laughs> It's, I, Mike would leave it be all right. <laughs> if, if Mike would leave it, would be all right. Uh, is that what you said? <laughs> it's a good thing I wasn't drinking at that moment. <laughs> if it was the grandkids of me, it'd be wonderful. Actually, it's not been too bad, I has it? Uh -uh. I, don't, I think it, it's I going think it, fine. I it mean, went easier than I thought it would so far, but it's only been like a week and a half. <laughs> so, actually, I've lived with the kids before. Yeah. For about six months a couple of different times so we kind of jack has cleaned her out of ice cream bars and dave's cleaned her out of peppermints yeah so the, <laughs> <laughs> so you know um, we're we're doing fine i think yeah. we haven't killed each other off anyway yeah. uh sarah why does your kitchen have two sinks i have no idea we don't know and it's, they're not it's not a little vegetable sink uh, either it's two big regular two big sinks, sinks. Mm -hmm. and what's funny about this house it has 11 sinks yeah 11 in the entire house and shop i'm like are you there's two in the shop alone <laughs> well, the shop makes i have no house. idea they really but, liked their bathrooms and sinks here which is good i mean that's good mm -hmm. sort of well, but I mean, in the shop i think you'd want to separate your bathroom sink from your if you're cleaning tools well yeah i guess in the shop so yeah they've got a bathroom and a work sink in the shop so the shop's yeah. unusual though because it doesn't just have a toilet and a sink it has a shower too which is nice yeah mm -hmm. so i'm not sure if yeah can, i was thinking you could do it without the music uh yeah music one might get it. yeah so um real quick here judy wants to know if i'm going back to brown hair i'm probably not i got tired of dying mm. my hair so That's i'm just like point. i'm 49 i'm just gonna embrace my old age and go on with life oh a i can apply singles. dave says i can apply for silver singles <laughs> oh, my do you think if that <laughs> mike standing there looking like i don't think so do you think if that, here's what i always wondered if mike and i applied on these matchmaking sites would we actually match, match up, up? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so. Uh, well, I think a lot of people were talking about how much they love your hair. Oh, thank you. Um, it is a pretty gray. <laughs> I mean, you. it's really pretty yes. gray. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Okay, Bibles. Back to Bibles real quick. We wanted to show you guys what's happening with the Bibles because we have had Diane. Thank you so much. She faithfully every week, I think, or two she's been donating so we are getting all those donations and we wanted to show you guys what's happening with the bibles so go ahead and you can talk through what you they sent us a video and so we sent it to a church in the philippines because we were getting so many requests we couldn't keep them up so we went to two different churches in the philippines and we said okay we have all these people in your town can you distribute the bibles if we send them to you in bulk to help save money and that kind of thing. And they said, sure. So here's the pictures. Well, actually, and this one pastor here requested a bunch of Bibles from us. And we said, what, what's up with that? How come you're requesting so many Bibles? And when he told us, we thought, oh, we'd like to help out with that. So unfortunately, you can't hear the music. But this was, uh, wow, I'm sure this better. This was, uh, them, they were very excited about getting the Bibles. So they got video of all of them arriving. 
and it's got some whippy music. Just imagine that. <laughs> that one. And then they show da 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 so over the moon, like it's the best gift they've ever gotten before. So thank you so much, those who have um, helped with that. They're very, very excited. And should we mention the other part? Yeah, you can go ahead. This particular church is a, a smaller church plant in a remote place. <laughs> so I was the one that worked with him. So he, he said that, even though it was for all of us. And then uh, there's also... Should we show the video on or? Yeah, you can. Um, so we started talking with this pastor and we researched him a lot and we, we stalked him on Facebook and we kind of got some references and stuff like that because... Well, he had requested 50 Bibles. Yeah, he had requested 50 Bibles. And then, my, then he also told Mike, he said, if I could have a prayer request, please, we really desperately need church building, but we can't afford it. And... Mike started talking with them and he said, okay, he said, well, how much are you needing for the church building and all of that? And they said, well, we need 10,000 pesos a month. We were like, okay. And we go and look it up and we're like 10,000 pesos is what? $200, $200 a month was all they needed to get a church building. We were like, are you kidding me? But that was so far beyond the reach just because. Yeah. They just could poor. not do it because it's such a poor neighborhood. So we were talking about stuff. So, we, as part of the Bible money, we sent them the deposit and two months worth of rent for their, we're going to, we're going to do it for a year for them for, to start, but we've already sent them the deposit and the first two months of rent payment. And this is what they showed us to, um, what they're doing. Well, they sent a bunch of pictures that I don't. I have to get the pictures out, but I have a video. They sent a bunch of pictures of people in the building worship and everything, but then they also had a feeding program they did with the new building, so they wanted to show. And I think it's really interesting looking at the area here because, um, you know, it's super pretty, but also you can see that it's uh, big. It's big, but also um, pretty poor, but the people have an amazing heart and attitude for everything. And so, yeah, this is them feeding kids at the new church. And they were just um, super, super excited to have Living on a Dime people involved. So we were very excited to see it. So we wanted to share that with you guys so that you can see where your money is going with um, the donations that you guys have helped us with all of this. This is blown, <laughs> this is blown up way more than we <laughs> ever Real realized last year when I first offered to send a Bible to that one person after dad died. So, um, so yeah, that was, um, that was really a shock. So we've really come a long way with that. Oh, thanks, Diane. Oh, thank you. Bible Diane. Money. Yay. Yeah. Thank you so much. So thank you guys for helping us yeah, for help doing these it. people. We can do more. It helps. And we've been anyone. sending Bibles to India and Turkey and uh, Canada and England. and Well, not England anymore. We can't do England anymore. But we've been sending. See, I told you so. <laughs> we've been sending them all <laughs> over the place. And so people have just been sending us letter after letter saying thank you so much for that. So. Well, actually, what's interesting about the Bible, too, <clears throat> is we had a bunches of people asking for them in this one area. And I got to thinking, I wonder if, because one of them suggested that she was a college student. And I was wondering if they were connected to a church school or a or school or something. Or, and yeah. I, I kept asking people and they would say, oh, thank you so much. This is the best gift I've ever gotten in my life. But they didn't say who they were, like if they had a connection. But one day, finally, somebody said, yes, we're part of this specific church in this town. And I realized virtually everyone is because all of the requests were for this one town. <clears throat> and so then we realized they were all telling each other in this church 
And so, so we contacted, uh, we contacted somebody at the church who ended up being the first person that we sent the Bible to in the Philippines. And, uh, <clears throat> I said, Hey, you know, we have a lot of people that are asking and we just as soon send you like cases of them instead of individual ones, because it would cost less and you get more of them. <clears throat> and so she said, uh, that would be awesome. And then of course, we got messages from all different kinds of people at the church saying how awesome and wonderful that was and how appreciative they are. But they had a need that's much greater <laughs> uh, than we at the moment have been able to deal with. But we did send them. Uh, we sent well, we sent uh, we arranged to send 100. But uh, the lady that I was working with talked to somebody at the store and they managed to get some local language Bibles and then some other ones like the ones we were sending that are produced there and not imported. And so she said, I hope you don't mind, but I asked him if we could change this because now we can get 150 for the same price. <clears throat> so we were pretty excited about that. So anyway, we kind of feel like God has led us certainly to some of the, these places in the Philippines. I mean, we're still sending them to the, to America too. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. the Philippines uh, seems yeah. like we didn't anticipate that as a field at all. <laughs> yeah. So now we're sending them to that, to two churches. One church has had a delay with the weather and then COVID and every, or that thing going around and all that. So they've had a delay in getting their Bibles, but we're hopeful, hopeful they will get them. So, so a couple people said on our two sinks in the kitchen, one, it could be a kosher sink. That's possible. I don't know how many Jewish people live in Sheridan, Wyoming. It's not a big Jewish population that I know of. Mm -hmm. Very possible. But somebody else said a canning sink. There's no way that's a canning sink. Because not, if a person right was... Shape. Yeah, if a person was doing canning, they wouldn't have the sink clear over here and the stove clear over here. It's just not. Yeah, that's that's what this is a strange yeah. arrangement about it. It's just it doesn't make like sense. It doesn't feel now like the one that does make sense was somebody said maybe the husband was a fisherman, and maybe that was like a fish oh, cleaning pity. sink or something. Mm -hmm. That could be a good possibility. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Those that's the one that makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. It could be a kosher kitchen, but like I said. There's no Jewish synagogues or anything around here, which, I mean, I know. I'm not saying there's no Jewish people in my home. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for this somehow. All I'm saying is... Well, it's just, not like downtown New York City or something where you yeah, have more of a population. Yeah, of it you know, thing, I so. mean, so I would say it could be, but I it's doubtful, but... Anyway, um, but they do fish in the pond back behind us, so the fishing yeah. thing does make sense. Yeah. So when I was growing up, my grandmother and also my great aunt, both of them had these giant kitchens like this, so they could be cooking and washing and doing dishes and stuff while interacting with the family in the living room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if that's it could idea. just be they had a lot of family and they really liked to cook. You know, it could just be that. Mm -hmm. Michelle wants to know, is there a website you can listen to the NLT version of the Bible? I don't know. You just have to Google it. There is, but I'm trying to remember. I don't know. I'm oh, sure. I'm sure there is. Well, oh, well, here, wait. Jeannie sent her a link for one. Well, this is ESV and not NLT, but ESV is, is about as easy to read as NLT. So that would be that would be okay. Um all right, next, how are we doing on um, finding you a house? <laughs> We're not, there's nothing for there, sale. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing there's for nothing sale. new going up. So we'll see how long it takes. Uh, Shelly, how do we Venmo, Venmo you or how do we send you money? So you can, we have a Bible donation. If you go to livingonadime.com, click on the shop. Check YouTube. Then um, go to uh, go to Living on a Dime, click on the shop, go to Bibles, and in the Bibles, you'll see a link for Bible donations, and you can just, we do it in $10 increments, and you can just donate however much you want to do. We have some people that donate $10, and then some people, one person donated a lot. So you just, however much you want to to do is totally fine. We did it in $10 increments. That's one Bible. 
that covers one Bible and that just makes it easier to do that. You can also send us a check, Living on a Dime. What's our new P.O. Box? Six, 6837. Living on a Dime, P.O. Box 6837, Sheridan, Wyoming, 82801. Um, okay, and then Dave says, look at YouTube. Oh, we got another super chat. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. $50 from 99 Zane. Thanks so you much. You guys are so Yay. We will help. We will send that with that. And thank you, Ditching the Grind. $5 for Bibles. Thank you so much. You guys are so great. Thank I you so much. I was thinking about you guys today. You, some of Yay. you have been with us for so long. It's like you're our family or like an old married couple type thing. Yeah. <laughs> You've been with us forever. And it really means a lot. Thank you so much. All right. And somebody said, Tara, you always look so mad at your mom. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> I'm concentrating on reading the comments. Yeah, if you so. could see what we're trying to do here, they, we've got Facebook, yeah. we've got YouTube. She's trying to think about the recipe yeah. and talk. And I'm trying to keep a conversation going while reading the conversation. And Michael's so. showing her stuff on his computer <laughs> for questions. So she's just really, so I'm just I don't know focusing. how she does it because I can't even talk. And watch the computer at the same time. And I got new glasses, and I haven't figured out where the <laughs> reading is yet. So, um, okay, yes. Did you have something, dear? No, I was just looking to see about the NLT. I, know oh. I think I have an audio version somewhere, but I'm not sure if it's through the Bible app or why. Oh, okay. What's funny about this house, guys, is the couple that built it was, I think, in their late 50s, 60s. And it was just a couple, from what I understood. Yeah, it's a big house. It's over 4,500 square feet for just the house and then a 2,000 square foot garage, mm -hmm. shop, whatever you want to call it. So they must, So everybody thinks, I had a lot of stuff. <laughs> At least I brought people with me. I don't know. But, um, okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah, somebody said if it was a kosher kitchen, they would have had two refrigerators. Yeah, you're probably That's right true. about that. So we That's can true. cut the kosher out. I think the biggest thing is either it was a fisherman, like they said, or a big family. Christine what? said that two people, it allows more people to cook at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And if it was a family thing, maybe that was the reason. Could yeah. Be. Uh, watching Tara do the comments here. You guys, I'm not talking to you right now. But I do read all your comments after the live stream. I do. I go through Facebook and YouTube. So I get to hear everything you say. I feel bad that I can't answer you back, you know, on the live yeah. stream. But I do read all of your comments that you put on there. So. so Michelle said she's following Jar of Fireflies on YouTube. That's so hilarious. I just found that lady yesterday and I watched like three of her videos. Mm. And I was watching her because I'm like, okay, what do people find fascinating about us? And she was doing similar videos, kind of. So I was watching her to see, and I ended up watching the whole video. I was like, okay. <laughs> you should watch us and see if you like us too. Yeah. yeah. Consider doing Twitch for these shows. I don't even know what Twitch is. Do not do Twitch. It's, I don't know. It's another live streaming platform. It's, yeah. Yeah. So everybody wants to know if I'm going to paint the kitchen cabinets. I think Mike would have a stroke if I paint the kitchen cabinets. I wouldn't have a stroke. I think you would have a stroke. Jack would have a stroke if I painted yeah, the kitchen I mean, cabinets. They are very nice. I was going to say these are They're exceptionally really nice, nice. <clears throat> nice cabinets. So it would be. Huh? They're really high quality cabinets. Yeah. They put in like top of the line. Mm -hmm. So even though they're 16 years old, they're still really, really nice. Oh, and they're not, they're not a bad color, really. They're, I, I enjoy no. this color. It's not the typical oak yeah you know type i don't mind the color and no. i don't mind the look of it it's just the arrangement yeah <laughs> for someone who cooks a lot well, it's like it's tara not... said one day she has to keep a hand towel on each end of the kitchen for both sinks you know and stuff like well, that and different little odds and ends like that and like it's arranged so bad like i have the peanut butter and the toast and the toaster over here but then all my silverware is over here so we have to walk back and forth. The teapot is over here with a second sugar, but the spoons are all over here. And so you have to walk back and forth for everything. And it's, and then, yeah, I can have more spoons over here, 
But I honestly don't think I'm going to get the boys trained to put half the spoons. And <laughs> you can't even get them trained to put them in one drawer, let alone two to drawers. To unload the dishwasher. I don't think that's <laughs> no going to be No offense, my loves. No offense. <laughs> Do you think you would put up silverware in two different spots in the kitchen? No. See? <laughs> well, I'm not sure I like, would put the silverware in two different that's spots that's in the kitchen. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, oh, thank you, Karen. Sent you $5 for your house fund. Oh, thanks. Karen, thank you. Yeah, we're I'm looking to find but... and I don't mind being at the kids, but I am in the basement and I can hear almost everything that's going every time anybody's walking and it's quite a busy household, you know, and things Stop. like that. So, yeah. Are the boys She's in the Nan cave? I'm yeah. in the Nan cave. Jack named it the Nan Cave, so I have to go down to the Nan Cave every evening, you know, and that type of thing. <laughs> um, so somebody asked if the boys pick up, get to pick their own room colors. They can, but they didn't really want to. I don't they know. Do you want to? Lace curtains. <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave has lace curtains. Dave still has lace curtains. I just what they had on. They look nice. I mean, he's he's like, they look nice. Okay, I'll leave them. But do you want to change your He's room low colors? maintenance, Dave is. No. See, he likes his room color. So. Yeah, they like it. I'm getting. I just like the whole house in general. I don't think anything has to change. <laughs> you just like the whole um, house in general? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um. Kimberly said she had the same patio set that was a kit that was a living room set for years. That's funny. Um, let's see. Thank you. They let me out every once in a while. Like in the morning, they'll open the door and let me out and stuff oh, like that. <laughs> What's funny is we do try to knock on the door. Right? Well, Michael, every time Mike, every time Mike's on the door, he's like, Avon calling. <laughs> now Mike tries to knock on the door. The boys just come in and say, Nan, are you sleeping? As if I sleep all the time. <laughs> so they have three different ways to enter into through my my downstairs to get down yeah. to there. So I never know when one's going to be coming from a different direction. Wouldn't it be cheaper to add soundproof to the ceiling of the basement? It would, but mom doesn't like the low ceilings. So. Yeah, it's it's kind of dark down, a little bit dark. Mike put new lights in, but there's not much uh, daylight, you know, regular daylight. And so there's just a few things like well, that. Well, maybe we just not... need to add a thousand. Oops, sorry. This is pretty tasty. See, your yep. mother is a good cook. It's pretty tasty. You have no faith in my cooking. It's pretty tasty, huh? Um, maybe we just need to add a thousand feet into the backyard because that tree's probably going to come down anyway. So yeah, it's got windows and a nice big sliding glass door, but the deck is over that. So on the yeah. north side, so it blocks even more light. But it's kind of cool because I was sitting there yesterday with the sliding glass door open and everything, and there's a deer just laying about. Five yep. feet from the door, mm -hmm. you know, just laying on the ground and it's kind of yeah. fun to watch look out anyway. Yeah. So we've been having the deer. I thought about doing another YouTube channel showing all the wildlife. We have one dumb pheasant. That thing is so scared, but he keeps coming yeah, walking we have a through pheasant. our yard. But every time I go to try and film him, he's just off. Oh, the snake. We, we went on a walk today and the boys and I came back. And as we were walking up the front sidewalk to go into the house, Tara has flowers on the sidewalk on oh. each side. And Jack said, oh, Nan, I just wanted to warn you, there is a snake that lives down here in these flowers that come, you know, can go across the sidewalk. Yeah, I'd already meant the snake. <laughs> but you know what bothers me is the squirrels. They're loud here. I don't know what's wrong with but Wyoming they're squirrels. But so, they're so... They're disturbing. <laughs> They look malnourished or malnourished. Nourished. <laughs> I can't talk tonight. But their fur is just, they don't have a big fluffy tail, you know. It's just like they're losing their hair and their fur, and they, I feel really bad for them. But he's must have because you ate the watermelon. You lost over. Some made it. It's gone. It's gone. Some made it. But I compost in place, so I just put all my stuff straight in the garden. Everybody's like, you're going to have rats and all that. We don't have rats in Wyoming. We don't have rats in Colorado, so it's not a problem at all. But it's no different than a compost pile. People say, oh, you're going to have rats. 
you get if, if you're going to have rats in a compost pile, you would have rats throwing your compost to straight in the garden. So that's why I just throw it straight. Yeah, I, I've stuff. always put my compost straight out. I mean, a lot of so, times out in the flower bed and that and I've never not had on any... purpose. She's just don't even get mom started on her gardening. Oh, I love my compost pile. I have this lovely compost pile. But I don't do any gardening. But I grow things. I'll throw my potatoes. Yeah. I didn't. I have. I had two big potatoes mm -hmm. growing in my compost top pile. I didn't even plant them. I've had a tomato bush growing. Oh, I've had a watermelon and cantaloupe growing just for me throwing my. Did stuff. you actually get a watermelon and cantaloupe? I did. Okay. As a matter of fact, I had two cantaloupes. Oh, okay. I had to tie it up and everything. Oh my. So we won't go into mom's gardening thing. She we makes have... fun of my gardening, but I say I just throw my stuff in the compost pile and it grows all the time. So don't get me started on the gardening thing. I do that just to drive her crazy. Um, let's see. Somebody said, what are the super chat donations used for? Whatever you designate them for is what we use them for. So if you designate it as Bible money, it goes to Bible money. If right. it goes to mom, then I give it to mom. So and when we were in Kansas, I just gave it to her when I would save it up and then give it to her when we came. So mm -hmm. um, what are our countertops made of? Quartz, maple, quartz or marble? No, it's for Micah, actually. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you'd be surprised my son and daughter-in-law, when they sold their house, they had just for Micah. And the gal swore up and down. It was it was, it was quartz. Yeah, she, she swore. and my daughter in law kept saying, "No, it is." And she said, "Yeah." And even when the people later on went to sell the house, she still said that they had quartz countertops yeah. whenever they went to sell the house, and it wasn't. It yeah. Was just, so, yeah. Uh, somebody was asking about our address. So I just pasted it in. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And um. Genevieve says our house is a minimalist nightmare. Oh, yeah. I mean, not even close to being a minimalist. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like my stuff. Although, I will tell you, I'm almost paralyzed at the moment trying to get finished putting stuff up because I'm just like, brother. It's not the amount of stuff. It's just figuring out where I want to put it. Like, Where's I have to be the most convenient to have it stored. Well, or stuff, like I too. had all these really cute kitchen knickknacks that I loved at the old house but I have nowhere to put them in this kitchen. So stuff like that, it's like, okay, so do I use them out for the studio? Yeah, I'll probably do that. But am I sure I want it out there? Well, I don't know. And so it's stuff like that that I'm and having an issue with. And that's a good thing to remember if you're moving. This time I got rid of a huge amount of stuff because furniture, knickknacks, half the time they won't fit in your yeah. new house. So if you're on the fence about getting rid of stuff when you're moving and it's not something you really, really love, yeah. I would just get rid of it before you move and not haul it because every house I've moved into, nothing has fit it properly, you know, yeah. so. Lori said, as long as the deer don't come to visit, actually, we have deer every day here. They yeah. do. Yeah. But it's not been a problem. Every time I come around the corner of the house to go out to my car and stuff, I came face to face with a deer. I'm about three feet away from me. And there's a mom with two babies. It's just right. I mean, maybe five to 10 feet away from us laying down every is the, day. Is the camera hooked up to something? Jack said there's one right out the window oh, right now. It, is it oh, gone? Oh, you never mind. Away? It just walked away. Yeah. He said, Jack said there was one right out there um, just a minute ago. So I'm curious, those black eyed Susans that they apparently don't eat, if you put them on the edge of a garden with yummier stuff in the middle will they avoid the yummier stuff to not get sometimes it depends but yeah depends on how hungry they are and how aggressive yeah. and people were asking about the snakes so far we haven't seen any poisonous ones no. they're garden snakes. although there are rattlesnakes from what i've heard here so oh, there are yeah but um we haven't seen any so although on our walk walk today there's a pile just at the edge of tar and mike's yard on the wildlife thing huge pile of wood and everything and we were reading the science says oh we pile this wood so skunks and foxes and all these animals can have <laughs> shelter i'm thinking in our backyard they've got this pile of wood for these animals to shelter in so yeah but, how far are we from montana like 12 miles <laughs> yeah like we're, really i mean i think i think the closest entrance to montana is 14 miles 14 miles so we're really super close. Um, 
let's see will we do another house tour yeah probably but not anytime soon i mean i want to get stuff we're trying to even just get furniture stuff done you know, set in proper places um, and things but yeah we had two households and a full-fledged business that we had to move here so it's going to take us a bit to try to yeah uh you know and we're still trying right. to run the business at the same time so it's going to take us a little bit a little while so to get all this done so um sorry i'm having issues with my glasses <laughs> um okay sorry um tara look for wood shelves at yard sales oh yeah you should see my collection in the garage in the shop i've been getting all these freebies like tons and tons of freebies every day as a matter of fact i got oh i got the coolest thing i told her hold on let me see if i can get oh shoot how do i get out of here you guys should see this this uh cabinet i just found let me see if i can get it she said she wanted 25 dollars for it which i thought was kind of overpriced but look at this baby right here oh my goodness is would that not be the cutest makeover right there look at that thing and it's cute so i got her down to 15 dollars, but i think that is worth the 15 dollars. but otherwise You've got Other a lot of free wise. stuff or very, very inexpensive. Yeah. You know. I I mean, like three or four times a week, I go yeah. and get stuff. She's almost spending more time so, on Facebook Marketplace, isn't it? Than yeah. she does anything else. She gets up each morning and checks it yeah. out. And so like every five minutes I check it out. <laughs> so we're re all that furniture I said and knickknacks to get rid of. Don't be afraid to get rid of them because she's already found almost everything to replace just about yeah. you know now i'm only sitting in a single chair downstairs but that's another story. now that's your choice <laughs> no. oh know. my word I you make it say. sound like we're torturing <laughs> you i had to do it i See just what I have to put up with? everyone I says just... you're just a sweet little old lady <laughs> sweet mm -hmm. little lady <laughs> yes now grandsons how old is your nan Thank you, Jack. <laughs> oh, dear. The fires are bad in Montana. Oh, we know. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of smoke here. The smoke has actually been really, really bad. And as a matter of fact, I had to take, well, I had to take Jack somewhere today. <sighs> Let's see, how do I say this? I had to take Jack for a special thing today and the lady was talking about how her daughter had to go to the allergist and she said her lungs were just so bad that they had to put her on special inhalers for the smoke for the because smell. it's so bad but it's it's been really bad mm -hmm. here so we're we got rain the next three days so we're really thankful for yeah. that not that it'll probably help much but the other day the sun was red at noon and we could look straight at it without hurting our eyes and yeah. I've, I've been thinking about you guys in California, Denise and all you guys. I just, I'm really concerned about you because if we're having smoke this bad, I can't even imagine what yeah. you guys, and the flooding in different areas, it's just like, it's one thing after another, but. Um, somebody said we should get trail cameras. We should. We should get a couple of trail cameras and put them out front and back. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. It. It, it, that would be really cool, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, did we do a house tour? Yes. Go to YouTube, and it was like four or five videos ago mm -hmm. that we did um, the house tour. So it is on there. Um, that was that was before we had our furniture moved in, but it was when it was yeah. empty in that. Yeah. So um, anyway, yeah, we've been doing that. Any other questions? Uh, well, here? a couple people asked. Did you already do a house tour? Oh yeah, I just answered that. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. So uh, we're gonna, you guys will be seeing more. So we're doing um, more vlog type videos, just showing our daily life and Mike rolling his eyes. The next time I have to have him help me compile something, and he says I have on video. <laughs> she says she's not getting any more stuff, but we need this stuff. We need end tables. I got rid of all my end tables. I got rid of my coffee table. I oh, got rid of just hassling her. all the dressers. So 
desks, all that stuff. I know you're hustling me. I don't really have so, a problem with what she's collected so yeah. far. <laughs> I actually, it looks really bad in the garage because like <laughs> two RV bays are full, <laughs> but they're spread out. Like my kitchen table, I got a brand new kitchen. Well, not brand new, but I got a free kitchen table that I'm going to redo. Well, the top's over here and the, the base is over there, here. And... So it looks really bad, but I really don't have that much. Let's see what I've got. She's trying to convince herself. I've got a new <laughs> kitchen table for me. I had a humongo desk that's now down in the basement. I had a humongo table for us to put our printers and stuff that I got for free. I have five end tables, but we need two for Mike and I and one for Jack and then three for the living room. So I still don't really have enough end tables. That's why I got that other cute thing that I asked her for. And then I got a desk for my for Jack out here because we have him play on the computer out here in the living room. And then I got a desk for him to do his Lego stuff that goes in his room that I'm redoing all this. Cause I'm going to be painting all of these and redoing all of these. And so and you're going to be doing videos on them, aren't you? Yeah. And I've got four rolling chairs that came with the table. So I kind of needed to take them with the table and I don't necessarily need those, but I got the cutest fabric for a dollar 70 a yard. And I was like, well, good grief. I'll just redo these for a video and then I'll sell them or give them away. If I can't sell them, I don't know how well I can sell furniture here it's so small it'll be kind of iffy if it sells well or not i don't know people mm -hmm. some people seem like they're not having an easy time selling their furniture here if i was in denver it'd be gone in in a day but since we're not um and let's see what then i've got three dressers out there so it's not like and, i really have a lot and i have my chair in the basement my one chair in the basement <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm in a quandary because I hate to unpack too much or buy too much because if I'm going to find a house and move into it, you know, I don't want to have to move a whole lot of stuff. And I don't even know what kind of furniture, like I said, that would fit in a new house. So I'm just kind of taking it easy. I'm teasing Tar about having the one chair, but I'm just kind of, you know, waiting to see what happens a little bit. And I've only been here, what, a week and a half? Yeah. So, um, uh, why did we get rid of so much stuff? Kimberly wants to know. Well, just because we didn't want to move it and it's kind of nice to get fresh things, even though it's all used and I'm painting it and all that it makes, first of all, it makes for good videos for us. So it's actually a business move for me for part of that. And it's nice to get different, new, different well, things. And so. the living room in here is totally different from her living room in her other house. So she'd have to have a different type of couch to fit in here or chairs, chairs and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's what we were talking about before. Sometimes things just won't fit in, you know, in the new house that you are moving into. So it's better to get rid of it. I moved 1300 miles. So to move all that stuff and then it not fit into my new house, you know, it's better just to try to sell it or get rid of it some way and then get new stuff. And when you get it free, like what Tara is doing almost. And you only sit in the same chair every day. Anyway, you don't sit on anywhere else. Oh, really? Back to my chair. Yes. I'm back to your chair. <laughs> you only sit in the same chair every day. Um. I feel I'm being unfairly represented here. <laughs> Karen uh, says when BJ visits with his RV, have him take it back to Colorado and sell. Yeah, I could yeah, well, that's that. an idea. Yeah, he probably would. Um, uh, oh, well, here, Sandy says, Jill, I always sit on the same piece of furniture. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah. But anyway, part, part of it for me was a business move because I knew people would like to see me redoing the chairs and stuff and how we do this. And like for furniture in our entire 27 years of married life, we have spent $4,000 on furniture, but 3,500 of that was for two king size beds, brand new king size beds for Mike and I, everything else is used that we've gotten free or cheap. Or that not I got separate, not one for you and one for Mike. Well, some days I wish it would have been, but, <laughs> but different times. But we had one bed for like 15 years, and then we got another bed because Tara has yeah. fibromyalgia, so she has but problems. Not that it does me any good anyway. We're talking about how we hate this bed right now, anyway. <laughs> but um, 
so all the furniture that I've ever had, I've had two new couches that were $500. And then everything else I think is used. It's used. Yeah. I can't think of anything else that I got that was new except for two beds and two. Oh, and then the boys is two mattresses. And Ellie's mattress. We, we usually, we usually buy new mattresses so. most of the time. Yeah. Well, only now that we're rich. I mean, I, we live Jack sleeping on a used well, mattress yeah. and I, we had I used have mattresses used, for I've years. Had, as a matter of fact, I slept on a mattress for, I don't know how many years from that's my fam, my aunt gave me and stuff like yeah. that. So it's not always, but. But I mean, we've lived on, we, there was probably the first 10, 15 years of our marriage. We slept on used mattresses. Mm -hmm. Everybody did. Uh, what did we have in those big two trucks if we got rid of all our furniture? Well, we had to move. They had two to move businesses. Books. Yeah. And I have a lot of antiques that are big and bulky that like the hall tree and the secretary. And we did bring our couch this time. I didn't get because I just bought our couch like 18 months ago. So I didn't get rid of our couch. And the antiques, Tara didn't buy or anything. They no. were my furniture that I gave to Tara years ago to, you know, have and everything. Yeah. So and they had my furniture too in the trucks. Yeah. So one full truck took up mom stuff and our business stuff mostly. Yeah. And then the other big truck. And I also have a lot of garden stuff that I brought that I was not willing to part with. I'm sorry. I love my gardening and I wanted my pot belly stove and I wanted my bird baths. And so there was a lot of gardening stuff that I would did not give up. I would rather sell my furniture and get rid of my furniture than get rid of my garden stuff because I can't replace that as easy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and here come to find out the um, garage sales have been really good. Yeah. That's another thing. We weren't yeah. sure on Wasn't if sure. they had garage sales, very many garage sales, or if we would be able to find furniture. And we live like two hour drive from the nearest big city where we'd be able yeah. to buy furniture and end tables and stuff like that. So we bought maybe a little bit more than normal just because we weren't sure. So <sighs> I kept going back and forth. I'm like, it's the same comments. I was going between Facebook and Facebook. <laughs> Okay, sorry YouTube, I've been missing your comments about that. Um, all right, let's see. The term shopaholic is sometimes used to describe people who have a shopping addiction. Yes, that mm -hmm. is me. Oh, for pity's sake. Actually, you, I'm not a shopaholic. No, she's not at all. When I need something, I really focus in and I try to mm. find it and I get it. But like when we left Colorado... I probably had only been to the thrift store or garage sale maybe, man, probably two or three times in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. I didn't go at all. And then we Neither started- Neither one of us like to really shop. No. It's kind of like a, we dread it. And of. I went more towards the end of living there because we started the new recipe channel and I needed different dishes for that. So I went more frequently, but it had been a good 18 months and I had probably only been a few times. I would say no more than- four or five at the most. I can't even imagine it was that much. When we go, it's usually because we have yeah. something we need to get. I had okay. hand-me-downs for Jack that he was wearing for school clothes and all that. So I didn't have to buy him any clothes. I had all the furniture we needed. We were trying to move, so I didn't go get anything. Mm -hmm. So, and even now I'm kind of like, okay, I'm on the lookout for other pieces of furniture for, for, uh, videos. But I'm getting real specific on what I'm, on what I'm looking for. It's, it's yeah. got to be really cute, like that one thing See, I showed. See, a lot of the stuff she's getting, she's starting to do the videos on redoing the furniture. She thought you guys might like to see yeah. some of that type of thing. So that's part of just her business stuff that she's really buying. And yeah, she's kind of incorporating the two together, getting the furniture and doing it for the business. Stuff. And. Does our Habitat for Humanity resale store? We do. And actually, I was there today. She she went without me. I was. Well, I thought you didn't like it. No. You said I, you didn't like it. I didn't it. know where she'd gone. And she came home and said, look what I got. <laughs> and she went to the thrift store, store without me. And it was 50% off day. And 50% off. And she didn't take me. <laughs> and I'm needing stuff. They didn't have very much though. But oh, this now habitat, she's trying to console me. If it's not on sale, it's really expensive. Yeah, it is. It was and the stuff isn't really that great. And it's, as a matter of fact, I told mom we need to open a thrift store. In this town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Let's just add that to our list of things to do. Dave's looking we? for a job. I can make him <laughs> store. Would you like to be store manager of a thrift store? <laughs> no, That's a what? no. You could meet all no. kinds of people. I don't want to be a manager. You can meet all kinds of people, and then we could pick through the free stuff. That's that's an idea, yeah. But the but the pro, there's a problem with thrift thrift stores here. There's not a building big enough, and so they're all little tiny, and they're kind Almost of like some together. of them are like houses that just have. So like some don't have uh, like one only has furniture and to do stuff. That's habitat. Then another basically only has clothes, basically. And then another one kind of has a combination of knickknacks and clothes, but it's kind of convoluted. And then there's another place that's just indescribable. <laughs> I got to do a video on it. I've never seen anything like it before. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to be tactful here, but it's not. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry. But we need to do a thrift store here because all of these places every time i've been they said not accepting donations today because they're so overstocked because they don't have enough room to put this stuff <laughs> and so anyway but um how about jill lives on the top of the main level we had thought about it actually the boy we thought about putting the boys in the basement and mom up here but she kind of want, but downstairs she's got her own kitchen, kitchen and everything. Big so. great room. So it was just like a toss of it, which know. you know which to do and that I mean, type of thing. Build. But the the walking around. Let me explain. The walking around noise is kind of like the dog barking for Tara. Yes. You know, is yes. what it is. So. Uh, so Judy said, buy a small house, buy a piece of land nearby. We can't do that either. I know. It would That's be, what I was planning on doing. We had looked to into do. it, yeah. it, and but it would be five hundred thousand dollars. So we're yeah. just trying to figure out what to, what to so, do. And if in a year or a year and a half we need to do that, we'll do that. But right now we were trying to wait. So. I have a place to stay. So we're, I'm just kind of taking my time trying yeah. to, you know, figure things out a little bit on it. Yeah. Get the best deal, figure out the best situation. So, And we don't have enough space. I know we have an acre and a half and it seems weird. But we don't have enough space it's, to build for mom here it's because like it's a, a hill. hill. Yeah. Well, we could build you a house on stilts, I guess. Well, maybe we should just do that. Build you a hundred square just foot throws, tiny house on the corner. Just throw a pile of wood out there like they do for the stray animals, and just <laughs> then you could just pick the choke cherries <laughs> out your window. <laughs> oh. You wouldn't even have to feed me or anything, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh. And said she saved $12,000 for a mortgage by making a spending freeze on everything possible for five months. Very good. Yeah, good job. That's the way to do it. See? Wow. Uh -huh. says, Thanks for your inspiration and idea. Oh, you did good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, the city of Sheridan only allows an 800 square foot mother in law suite. So we could maybe do something in the big garage for mom, but then we'd have no place to put our studio. So if we just didn't have living on a dime, that would maybe work. But at the moment, so well, we have the business. So mom living on a dime. Let's see which one. Well, we got to pay for it somehow. <laughs> um, open a thrift store to support the church building you were discussing. Oh. Oh, well, that's an idea. <laughs> Let's just end. I mean, it's a good idea. It really is. <laughs> but you can be doing things on the show. Yeah, so we're doing things on the show from the thrift store that we have to put back in the thrift store that we have to sell to send to the money in the church. See, that could work. <laughs> and see, then if we got a big, big, big enough place, we could just, well, maybe we should just turn our shop into the thrift store. I was going to mention, you said there's no big building. I started really? saying you've got one in your front yard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and all the furniture's already in there. Oh, Jan has a good idea. How about an earth home built into the side of the hill? Let's just put me a little <laughs> put you in a or dungeon. TP or something out there, put maybe. Put you in the dungeon even more. <laughs> oh my goodness, that would be funny. Um let's see. Yeah, then Dave could work for us. Yeah, well, he's already got an interview and he's hoping for another one, but the job I want, I'm not working for mom and dad again. You're not. <laughs> this is a big, it's a big thing. 
I got news for you. You're going to be working for mom and dad whether you want to or not. Okay, well, off me $20 Christmas. An hour. Yeah, offer me $20 an hour. See what I have to put up with? <laughs> you raise your rent to $2,000 a month. <laughs> <laughs> wow. oh, raise your rent uh, to $2,000 a month. <laughs> Oh, oh, the abuse. Crazy honey. cat lady says, call it the Hill Hobbit house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brother. Yeah. So Dave, Dave has one interview, but he's actually applied at another place that he'd rather work at. And he hasn't heard from them yet. So he's hoping he can get that. But, you know, then you have the interview and they say, oh, we want you. And then you're like, oh, great. Now what do I do? <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. What about the parking space for the RVs? Yeah, that would probably work, but we're only allowed 800 square feet. So it would be a small place. I don't place, need someplace huge, but... Um, probably 1,200 square 1200 feet would probably. be. 1,200 probably. And I don't need a whole lot of fancy anything. You know, like a lot of the houses have these bathtubs with the jet streams and all this kind of stuff. What are you looking at me for? <laughs> and I don't need anything like that or fancy countertops. You know, I just want basic... Well, With then windows. maybe we should just throw up a tiny house over there for you then. I know. Well, we've thought about a tiny house. So. Well, actually, why couldn't we just build on the other side of the garage a house for you? Would that work? Well, I mean, that wouldn't work. Never mind. Could use the plumbing for the, yeah. on that end. Yes, Loretta. People are begging for, hi for hiring here. One of the convenience stores was offering $15 an hour last week and now they're offering $18 an hour mm -hmm. because with a $500 bonus because nobody wants to work and don't get me started on that. Uh, Kimberly says, hi, Jack. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, don't forget 35% off right now. Everything in our store is 35% off, but if you need gluten-free set separately, put it in a separate order. Pre-ordering sale should ship around September 25th, give or take. I know it says the 15th, but we've had a delay with the printing. I'm very sorry. It's Mike's fault. Blame Mike. It's Mike's fault. I'm sorry. What happened? The cover. <laughs> oh, yeah. We had a cover issue that we missed catching when we were proofreading, like the name was totally off. Jill was so. going to be Jill Coop, and I don't know if she would have liked that. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, please check us out at livingonadime.com, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Oh, Brandy. Oh. Bye. <laughs> Bye.